the topics which we are going to cover today in our session are only two topics. NHS colposcopy screening program, a guideline which was updated in February 2020. And then we will discuss about the cervical cancer. Okay, because the colposcopy guideline is one of a very, very important guideline. And uh, RCOG really loves to ask these questions. And another thing, this guideline was updated in 2020 and there is a drastic change in this guideline. So what I have done is, I have taken the points only from this guideline. So if any of you have done the previous guideline, please unlearn that guideline. Do not look at that older guideline because you will get confused. What was in the previous guideline? What is in the new guideline? Please forget about the old guideline because that is no more recommended. That is no more to be followed because there is a big change in this guideline as HPV testing is become the primary screening method. In the previous guideline, they had suggested it. In this guideline, they have adopted it. So you have to follow this guideline. I do acknowledge and understand this is a very tricky guideline. So I will be needing your attention. And you will have to go through, probably you'll have to go through this session a couple of times to make the complete understanding of this guideline. And to summarize this guideline, there are three flow charts which are provided with this guideline. And I would say that they are more than sufficient to follow and it will help you solve the exam questions which are mostly coming in the form of extended matching questions, okay? HPV test and its interpretation. So for that, uh, they have given the flow charts. I will be discussing the flow charts also. Uh, but uh, before we go, let's see how to interpret the HPV test results. The first thing which we which I want to discuss is the inadequate sample. You have taken the sample on which you have to perform the HPV. Just remember one thing, I want to add a point here. I told you HPV is now the primary screening method. So when I say cervical screening or HPV testing, that means I'm talking about the HPV tests which will be done on the cervix. If HPV is positive on a sample, automatically cytology will be done on that sample. That is also one of the things which they have given in the guideline. If HPV is negative, fine, things are fine. But if HPV is positive, cytology will automatically be done, which is known as the reflex cytology same sample, they will do the cytology. So they do it, it's in a system, they have the guidelines, so they know that if they have, they'll be following it. So let's see, if you have done the sample and you find an inadequate sample, the report comes as inadequate sample. So you have to see at which level, at what stage or at what step you have a report of inadequate sample. If it comes at any screening test, you have to repeat it in three months, okay? For example, a patient comes to you for screening. You have done the screening and you got the result inadequate. What you will do? Repeat it in three months. Now, at three months, you did the test and again, you got the inadequate test result you will refer the patient to colposcopy, okay? So you have to remember this point. Previously in the previous guideline, it was more, I think three inadequate tests and then referral, but now 
two consecutive inadequate test results at any point in the screening, patient should be referred for colposcopy. Now, how to interpret the colposcopy findings and how to take things further from there onward. You have done the colposcopy and there is normal colposcopy. Still, you will do screening at 12 months. You will not uh, discharge the patient and you will not put the on the re routine recall. You have to screen at 12 months and at 12 months, HPV is negative. You then you will put the patient on routine recall because you want to be assured that there is no cervical pathology. Now, you have a patient referred for colposcopy due to inadequate HPV samples. And you have done the colposcopy. Colposcopy also comes as inadequate. Then what you will do? You will do the screening plus colposcopy at 12 months. Here, when it was normal colposcopy, you were just doing screening. And by screening, I mean HPV testing. Screening and colposcopy will be done at 12 months. And if it is normal, the patient will be in the routine recall. And of course, if it is abnormal, we'll follow the abnormal pathway. Now, if inadequate sample is at 24 months repeat test, we will see what do we mean by 24 months repeat test. You will refer the patient for colposcopy. So this is the interpretation and management of inadequate samples. Continuing with the HPV test and results, if you get HPV negative results, you will return the patient to routine recall. So when you have a question where you get the HPV negative results, please read the question very carefully. At what step and what stage you are getting an HPV negative results? Most likely you'll return the patient to the routine recall unless, unless the patient is on the test of cure pathway. It was, a, it was a part of test of cure pathway. It's a part of untreated CIN1 pathway. So we will see what is the test of cure pathway and what is the untreated CIN1 pathway because test of cure means now they say that if you have any pathologies, see and treat it. And once you treat it, you have to do the test of cure at six months, 12 months. We'll see that that is known as the test of cure pathway. You have to ensure everything is fine. And then for CIN1, we do have an option that we do not treat CIN1 and just follow CIN uh, with the HPV testing. So if it is HPV negative test, you have to follow those pathways and you cannot just put the patient on routine recall. And if HPV negative result has been gained as a part of follow-up of incompletely excised CGIN or SMILE, we'll see what it is, or cervical cancer or borderline changes in endocervical cells. So you can see things are not so straightforward. Just because you get HPV negative result, you can't put the patient on routine recall. If you have any of this thing in the given scenario, you have to pause and think, okay, now what's the next step? Then it's not the simple thing, okay? Now, continuing with that HPV test, we discussed the inadequate HPV, we discussed the HPV negative. Now, what to do if HPV is positive? And I told you if HPV is positive, cytology will be automatically done. Reflex cytology is done and it is negative. You will not discharge the patient just like that, no because HPV was positive. However, the cytology is negative. You repeat the HPV in 12 months and then interpret at 12 months. At 12 months, HP returns, it, HPV is negative. Put the patient on the routine recall. 
and if the patient HPV is again positive, you will again repeat the HPV in 12 months. If it becomes negative, then you will send the patient on routine recall. So just see if you have an HPV positive results, you can't take it lightly. You can't return the patient to routine recall until you have the HPV negative result with you. And only then you can send the patient to the routine recall. Now, what if you get HPV positive result as a part of test of cure pathway? Like you have done the treatment for CIN1 or CIN2, and then you, after six months, you did the HPV test and the HPV test comes as positive. So when you get this result, I put it in two lines. I could have put it in one line. Just wanted to emphasize on one point here. If, the, if HPV positive test result comes as a part of test of cure pathway, regardless of the cytology results, you have to refer the patient to colposcopy. Remember this point. So now you have HPV positive, and this was done after six months or it was a test of cure pathway. You get HPV positive again. Of course, you will do the reflex cytology, but regardless of the cytology results, you have to refer the patient to colposcopy because you had treated and it was a part of test of cure. Why HPV is positive? It should have been eradicated. It should have been negative. Okay. Now, what to do if you get consecutive HPV positive samples as part of primary HPV screening? I said that if you get HPV positive result as a test of cure pathway, straightforward colposcopy. Now, here you are getting yeah, the here we have three scenarios which I have given here. You have HPV is positive, and the cytology shows that borderline dyskaryosis at 12 to 24 months, you will refer the patient to colposcopy. You have to look at what stage HPV positive came and the cytology is borderline dyskaryosis. So this patient is to be referred for colposcopy. HPV is positive. So just remember one thing when I'm going to discuss, you have to see just one point. If HPV is positive, cytology will be done automatically. If cytology is negative, you may rescreen and you may discharge the patient from, and you, you can put the patient on the routine recall. But in case there is a problem with the cytology, okay, if there is a problem with the cytology, you have to do something. So this is the point. But remember, if you have HPV positive, cytology is negative or inadequate, and this was a this was a part of thing which was done at 24 months, two years. Again, you have to refer to the colposcopy regardless of the cytology being negative. Another thing, HPV is positive and it shows non-cervical query, glandular neoplasia. Patient should be referred to gynecology because this could be some other problem. So here is the flow chart. Now let's see here. You have done the HPV test. Now this summarizes it very nicely and I would really want your attention to this flow chart. And this is the flow chart I was talking about, which should be with you when you're solving the questions and you can, you know, how you can practice it, uh, how you can memorize it by practicing it try to reproduce it without looking at it. Now, first of all, you have a patient on whom you did the cervical screening, HPV test is done. HPV came as negative, you will send the patient on routine recall, simple. Now, HP was, HPV was positive. So we will automatically apply cytology here. Now look at the cytology results. If the cytology is abnormal, 
patient should be referred for colposcopy. So basically cervical screening protocol, you have to focus on these red ones and the green ones, where you have to refer the patient for colposcopy, where you can send the patient to routine recall. Now, HPV is positive, cytology is abnormal, colposcopy. Cytology is negative, but HPV is positive. You cannot discharge the patient just like that. You have to ensure everything is fine. So you will rescreen at 12 months. That means you will repeat HPV at 12 months. At 12 months, HPV comes as negative routine recall. Now the patient will be in routine recall. Now what happened at rescreening of 12 months, again, the patient has HPV positive. Again, you will look at cytology. Cytology is abnormal, straightforward colposcopy referral. Cytology is negative. Again, you will rescreen. That means again, you will do HPV. And this is the 24 months HPV. This is the HPV we were talking about. Now, here, cytology is negative. You did the rescreening at 12 months. That means 24 months. Now HPV came as negative routine recall, but here at this point, you get positive HPV. Now, regardless of cytology, forget about the cytology here. You have persistently for two years, persistently HPV is coming as positive with negative cytology. Now it's time that you have to refer the patient to colposcopy. So that is the point you have to see. You see, there is no um, abnormal cytology thing or anything. At this point, if you have HPV positive, you have to refer the patient for colposcopy. Is it clear? Please tell me in the chat box if it is clear or if you need any clarification so I can move ahead. All right. Okay. So there are three types of transformation zone where there is completely ectocervical. The transformation zone is completely outside the cervix, fully visible, small or large. Now, type two transformation zone is when there is an endocervical component. However, still this is fully visible. You can see what is the upper limit, upper border, and uh, may have the ectocervical component as well, which may be small or large. Type three transformation zone is that when the patient, when this transformation zone has the endocervical component and which is not fully visible. And it may have the ectocervical component, component here, which may be small or large. So you should be very well aware of the types of transformation zone because your transformation zone and the treatment of CIN will depend on that, especially when we talk about excision, which we call it large loop excision of the transformation zone LEDs. So aim is to remove the specimen as a single sample and the goal is to remove all the abnormal epithelium. So it depends the management and the extent of the abnormal epithelium, extent of the removal depends on the type of the transformation zone. If it is the type one transformation zone, you will remove more than seven millimeter in depth and length and make sure that you remove less than 10 millimeters in the females who are in the reproductive age. And if it is type two transformation zone, you should at least remove 10 to 15 mm of abnormal epithelium. In type three transformation zone, 15 to 25 millimeters will be removed. Very important numbers, very important treatment to be remembered. So to see and treat, approach when we will be taking this approach it can be done in the first visit in case of the high grade lesions and it should not be done in the first 
we, like it should not be done. The see and treat approach should not be done. If it is HPV positive and cytology is negative and you are doing the colposcopy, you should not go for C and treat approach. And if it is borderline or the cytology result is borderline or low grade, you will not go for the C and treat approach unless it is long standing. So when it is written something like this, it makes you read the question carefully. That if it is a long standing condition, maybe the option is C and treat. Otherwise, for high, usually it is reserved for the high grade lesions. So, now what do we do? I've discussed the treatment options of CIN. Now, CIN is CIN 1, 2, 3. And the, you know, the excision option, we can do it in the early stage cervical cancer also. You, 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 can, you are aware of the treatment. We discussed the treatment. Now, the most important point, the most important part is the management of CIN. Uh, sorry, the follow-up of treated CIN and early stage CA cervix. So how to follow up the patients? You have treated it. It's not just that you have treated it and then you are done and dusted. No. There is a proper follow-up you have to do, and this is a follow-up where you should be, you know, aware of how to go about. Why we have to do the follow-up in treated cases? Because even if treated, there is two to five times increased risk of CA cervix. And more than 50% of the patients, they are lost to the follow-up. So you treated the CIN or early stage CA, you have to ensure that you do the follow-up. So how do we do the follow-up? So this is the follow-up issue to be, which we will be doing after the treatment. If it is CIN 1, 2, or 3, you have to perform the test of cure at six months. And by test of cure, we mean that we will do the HPV testing. So now all that information we discussed right in the beginning is coming into application in one place. So at six months test of cure, you will see if the HPV is negative, recall the patient in three years, regardless of the age, the first recall will be after three years, regardless of the age. And if that recall is fine, if, if, at, if, at, if at that point HPV is negative, everything is fine, then you will put the patient on the age-related routine follow-up. Now, at test of cure, which was performed at six months, your result come as HPV positive. Regardless of the cytology results, you'll send the patient for colposcopy because your HPV is positive and this HPV positive has come as a result of test of cure, which was already treated. So we have to look into depth again, what's wrong. HPV and the patient comes to you for test of cure at six months. HPV is not available. You will repeat the testing in three months time. So this is the follow-up for CIN 2, 1, 2, and 3. What about the early stage CA cervix? Because we know early stage CA cervix, which is stage 1A1, we can do the large loop excision of the transformation zone, and that is the treatment. For those patients, you will do the HPV testing at 6 months and 12 months and yearly for nine years. And then only the patient will be sent back to the routine recall. So you see early CA cervix is taken very seriously. You have treated it. So you have to follow the patient. And if you collect it for, you have to follow the patient for almost 10 years. And for the follow-up of stage 1A2 and 1B1, the follow-up is individualized. It depends on the circumstances of the patient. One point to remember, 65 years of age has reached. You will continue to invite for follow-up tests 
and referral. And you will continue it until the follow-up is completed. So these patients will not be discharged from the follow-up. You have to ensure that the patient has complete follow-up. Now, what about the CIN1 management of those cases in which you did not treat? I told you we have the option so this, this was the management of those patients for which you treated it. Now we'll, we are discussing the ones we don't treat. CIN1, if we do not treat, how to follow them. This is the flow chart, which you will be following after the CIN1 untreated cases. You had the CIN1 on the biopsy or colposcopy and you have not treated you'll recall the patient in 12 months. And in the 12 months period, she is HPV negative. You'll call the patient in three years, recall in 36 months. Patient is HPV positive and cytology is abnormal, refer the patient for colposcopy. And HPV positive, cytology is negative. Again, recall in 12 months. One recall, second recall. And at that time, HPV negative, still you will recall in 36 months. So please pay attention to this specific timings which are mentioned. It is not the routine recall. This is a three years recall because by routine recall means if a patient is more than 50 years, routine recall means to recall her in five years. But even if the patient is more than 50 years, in this case, you'll recall her in 36 months. So you have to pay attention to this. HPV is positive again, and uh, cytology is negative. You will recall the patient in 36 months. And at any point, cytology is abnormal. You'll refer the patient for colposcopy. So this is the management of CIN1 if you do not treat it. It is recommended to manage the CIN2 and above. And they say that you should treat CIN2 and above. But there is a little room for conservative treatment. So conservative treatment can also be provided in CIN2. Like for CIN1, we have the option that we just leave it. We don't do anything. For CIN2, we have the option that we can offer the conservative if. So when, it, when it's... If that means we have to see a lot of things. If the colposcopy is adequate and it has excluded CIN3 and invasive lesion, CIN2 is present in no more than two quadrants of the cervix. And CIN2 is diagnosed on histology and it has been reviewed at MDT. And very important point, patient counseling and patient's informed consent and her choice. That patient agrees that she will have regular six monthly follow-up colposcopies. So this is what is important, that she has to have six monthly colposcopies, follow-up colposcopies. And she understands that it may take at least two years for it to resolve. What to do if CIN2 has been managed conservatively and it is not resolved in two years, then you must offer the treatment. Then you must offer the treatment for CIN2. Now, what to do and how to manage the patients in whom you have treated CIN2 or more than CIN2, that means CIN2 or CIN3. So how to follow them? You have done the treatment, you'll recall them in six months. Test of cure will be done in six months. HPV is negative, you'll recall the patient in 36 months, in three years. HPV is positive, regardless of the cytology results, the patient should be referred to colposcopy. We did discuss this point that when the HPV comes 
as positive as a part of test of cure pathway, regardless of the cytology findings, the patient should be referred to colposcopy. In this guideline is the glandular abnormalities and how to deal with that, okay? HPV screening can predict glandular intraepithelial abnormalities as well. And um, it should be, if you find the CGIEN glandular abnormalities, it is to be reported as glandular neoplasia of the endocervical types. So if you have uh, borderline changes in the endo endocervical cell samples, patient is HPV positive, she should be referred for colposcopy within two weeks and colposcopy is negative. The case should be discussed at the multidisciplinary team. And six months follow-up should be done with the screening. And this follow-up will be done at the colposcopy clinic. That's an important point because borderline changes in endocervical samples, they remain in the colposcopy clinic. Discharge to three years recall only if cytology downgraded to or uh, downgraded to negative after discussion in the multidisciplinary team. So what about the, if you have, it was borderline changes. What about you have the glandular neoplasia of endocervical type? The patient should refer, should be referred to the gynecology. There is uh, no role for endocervical curettage. Punch biopsy is not appropriate. Investigate and diagnose CGIN or SMILE. SMILE stands for stratified mucin producing lesions of the cervix. It should be done by the colposcopy and excisional biopsy histopathology. And if you have uh, glandular neoplasia of non-cervical type, the patient should be referred to gynecology and must be seen within two weeks of the referral. And endometrial biopsy is a must in these cases. So these are the a few points about the glandular abnormalities. And, you know, I do acknowledge this is a little tricky, little difficult, but of course, if it is given in the guideline, you have to do it. So now let's see what is the clinical management of glandular abnormalities. A patient has reported as been reported as glandular neoplasia of endocervical type, CGIN. The primary treatment is depending on the patient's age and her wishes. So if the patient is young, and she wishes to retain fertility, the primary treatment would be to remove the full transformation zone plus 10 millimeters of endocervix above the squamocolumnar junction. So that is the difference in the CGIN treatment. As it is a glandular type, so you will be removing extra 10 millimeters of endocervix above squamocolumnar junction. Now, what about the patient is old? like more than 50 years of age, or in a case where squamocolumnar junction is not visible. So what you will do, you will remove the full transformation zone and you will remove 20 to 25 millimeters of endocervix above the squamocolumnar junction. So it should be just where above the squamocolumnar junction means above, you know, wherever you think, is the squamocolumnar junction, you will remove 20 to 25 millimeters more. And remember this point, all these cases should be discussed at the multidisciplinary team meetings. You will be managing it and the multidisciplinary team meeting, the team members would include the gynecologist as well. Now, what about the confirmed CGIN management? Remember, CGIN is often occurring in the young patients and excision will be offered if the patient wishes to retain fertility. And conservative can also be offered. It's possible if excision margins are negative and invasion is excluded, okay? We come across one of the situations while managing the CGIN. CGIN, what to do if it is incompletely excised? 
and the management is not very straightforward for incompletely excised CGI and you have to pay attention. So we did discuss if we have high grade dyscariosis, if it is CIN3 and positive margins, we have to uh, follow certain criteria. But what if this is CGIN incompletely excited? You can't take it lightly. In incompletely excited CGIN, just remember you have to repeat the excision. So don't have to think about anything else, the age or anything. No, nothing. CGIN incompletely excited equals to repeating excision. But you may come across a situation where the patient does not want to have the repeat excision or maybe the repeat excision is not possible. Then what you will do, then you have to follow this patient. You will do the HPV at six months and the result comes as negative. You will again repeat the HPV in six months. And... HPV should be repeated annually for nine years. I've made this in a separate format of the slide because this requires a separate follow-up. So I hope this is clear. Just remember one point. CGIN, incompletely excised, equals repeat excision. And follow, follow her up. And if she does declines or not possible, then you'll follow this thing. Now, and this you will follow if the patient declines. If you repeat it and if on the repeat, the margins are all clear, fine. You will be following this chart. If CGIN is completely excised, this is the follow-up you will be doing. You have done the treatment. You will Call, recall the patient in six months for test of cure. HPV is negative. Again, you will recall in 12 months. HPV is negative. You will recall in 36 months. So that means CGIN, even if it is HPV negative, you have to follow for a longer time period than for CIN. That's the important point. Now, again, here you see HPV positive. Then you can go through how you will be managing the HPV positive. You can just go through this. Depending on the cytology results, then you will manage the patient and you have to complete the 10 years follow-up. Now, for cervical glandular neoplasia, we may have another option, which is hysterectomy. Hysterectomy may be indicated because you said that CGIN, you will do the excision if the patient wishes to retain fertility. And another option is hysterectomy. So when we will offer hysterectomy to the patient, if fertility is not needed, if there are positive margins after adequate excision procedure, this is one option. Treatment has been done by excision. And after that, when you are following up, you find another high-grade cytological abnormality that is an indication for hysterectomy. Patient is unwilling for conservative management. This is one of a very important cause, reason, because, uh, uh, you know, when you are putting the patient on conservative management, of course, the patient will have to attend for multiple follow-ups and it might not be... Uh, possible for a few patients, like adequate follow-up is not possible. There may be other indications like heavy menstrual bleeding, fibroids, or any other reasons for hysterectomy. And another condition and an, another indication is that if you are unable to exclude the invasive disease, the story does not end with hysterectomy. Even after you do the simple hysterectomy, for CIN, CGIN, or whatever, follow-up after simple hysterectomy should be followed. And this is a very, very important slide because this is the basis of many exam questions. So please pay attention here. Why 
we are concerned and why do we have to follow up after simple hysterectomy? The reason is the patients who have CIN, they are at high risk of vaginal intraepithelial neoplasia. Remember this point. And one uh, rule of thumb, those patients who have one cancer, they are at increased risk of other cancers as well. So you have to be vigilant. Now, we may have three scenarios. After simple hysterectomy follow-up, we have three scenarios. First scenario is the patient was on routine recall and there is no CIN detected in the hysterectomy specimen. So there is no wall sample indicated. By the way, uh, again, I would just tell you that uh, this portion of the guideline is totally different from what was given in the previous guideline. So you may find some questions in the practice books which will be following the older guidelines. So please pay attention to that and don't get confused. Another scenario could be the patient has hysterectomy and the specimen shows there is completely excised CIN, that there was CIN, but it has been completely excised. Now, what you will do, you will do the vault sample at six months. And HPV at the vault sample, HPV is negative. Don't do anything, simply discharge the patient. HPV is positive, cytology is negative. Send the patient for vault colposcopy. If it comes as normal, discharge the patient because your CIN has been completely excised so you can discharge the patient. So that's how you will follow up. No CIN, no vault sample. CIN but completely excised, vault sample at six months and then follow up. Now we can have another scenario where there is hysterectomy has been done. CIN was there, but it was incompletely excised. Now what to do? Now it will depend on the type of CIN. If it was CIN one, you will follow, like you will do the HPV screening follow-up and you will follow her up for, you will do the HPV screening at six months, 12 months and at 24 months. That means if it is CIN one, you will follow her for two more years in completely excised, okay? Now you look at the type of CIN, it's CIN two or three incompletely excised. So you will do the HPV screening at six months and 12 months and it will be repeated annually for nine years that means 10 years follow-up should be done and 10 years follow-up should be completed until the 65 years of age or 10 years whichever is later so these are the three scenarios of follow-up after the simple hysterectomy Remember one thing, if subtotal hysterectomy has been done, the patient remains in the colposcopy screening program. And if radical trachelectomy has been done, trachelectomy means the removal of the cervix, paracervical tissue, and placement of non-absorbable suture at the internal os. That's what is meant by trachelectomy in case if you're not aware. So if radical trachelectomy has been done, the patient of course does not have cervix. So this patient will remain under the care of treating gynecologist and oncologist. Okay, I hope this follow-up is clear because